you don't have unlimited time when things begin to deteriorate, but you do have time. Lord, what a day is Thursday, August 24th. How'd that happen? <laughs> 2023, and this is the weekend charts. I'm sure I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. And I'm humbled by your presence. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. Boy, do I have a lot to say about that. And instead of throwing together a bunch of slides, I figured it'd be better just to jump into the hot, the live charts and, and show you my concerns and, and what I'm thinking about. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks, just put in one symbol at a time. We'll do crypto first. I doubt we have a lot to say about that, but we'll take a look at it. I want to follow up on some things I talked about last week, uh, one in particular, performance-based metrics. And we might have a, a new little tool this week, thanks to uh, thanks to Jeff. And Jeff's here tonight. Thank you, Jeff. And then I want to follow up a little bit on a trader's journey, which I talked about last week. And also, I talked a little bit about it in my stock chart show. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or, as you probably know, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Okay, uh, last week during the webinar, Jeff pointed out that if you use weekly charts, a 5% buy line is not much different from the 10% buy line as far as the entry and exit points. And we are now at a five at the 5% weekly line. And then in another post, he wrote, warning shot. So kind of a warning shot, kind of a shot across the bow. And I didn't agree with that. So let's see what he's talking about. So if you take the 50-week closing high, and subtract 10% from it, I have it plotted here. If you have ACP, it, this should be an easy indicator to make in, in pretty much any pack. It's just 0 0.90 times the 50 week closing high. But in this case, this is the 10% line right here, okay? And this is what Jeff's talking about. And his point is when you get past 5%, the market could be in trouble. Now, I tried for quite some time today to try to make something mechanical work without the moving averages and everything else that we use with the 50 week, uh, I'm sorry, with the 10, with the TFM 10% system. And I couldn't make anything work with it, but what I did gleam from all that analysis that I did, I spent a couple of hours going through the charts today. But one thing that I walked away with is that uh, Jeff's right, it does give you a bit of a warning shot. So we're gonna kind of flesh that out quite a bit. So if you go back and look at the, S&P 500 over the last year or so, you could see when you're above that 5% line, it's pretty good. And this is especially true if you have Landry light above that 5% line, so to speak. So that might be a new indicator that we, we might want to explore is what happens when you're not only within 5% of the 50-week closing high, but the lows are also greater than 5% away from the 50-week closing high. So just like we'd have a moving average and the lows are greater than the moving average for your upside Landry light, you could use the same concept with the 5% line or the 10% line if you want. And I think that would be kind of a cool thing. Now, good is when you're within 5% of the... 50 week closing high. And as Jeff pointed out, a bit of a, a warning shot, but when you're within, when you drop below 5%, that becomes a bit of a caution. And then obviously when you get below 10%, that's where bad things tend to happen. And I borrow that where bad things happen from, as I say, probably every week from Guyard and Baleo. They wrote a paper, which I haven't gotten around to reading. <laughs> I think I know the gist of it. It's like it, they basically pointed out that bad things happen below the 200 day moving average. Well, bad things happen below any performance metric. That's where things tend to happen. And you don't want to base everything on this fact. But Greg Morris pointed out to me that markets just don't implode from from highs. It usually takes a while before they begin to implode. So as long as you're within those old highs, let's say 5%, the market is probably gonna be okay. And even if you go back to the slide that happened 
in 2022 that began in early 2022 you could see it took weeks and weeks and weeks before it really began to implode so you, the good news is you do usually have time to get out of the way and even in the crash of 87 which we could take a look at in just one second although it felt like it happened overnight and the, and the crux of it happened overnight there were a lot of warning signs signs going into it anyway let's take a look at the winter we this is uh 2002 so this would be the 2000 top and you can see good is as long as the market is in good shape as long as it's above that five percent line and then once you dip below five percent that's where you end up in a caution situation but notice that this top in 2000 it felt like it felt like the market just imploded and we had this big bear market that just came out of nowhere and everybody was caught off guard but notice how many weeks this, these are weekly bars we spent weeks and weeks and weeks in that caution area okay jeff says i have been looking at using two closes below the five percent line plus below the 50 simple moving average kind of a mix of the 230 and the tfm systems we have come close but not hit all of those metrics yet okay when we get to live i've got a, a live chart on this we'll take a look at that i like i like the way you think and that's one of the things i played with earlier today quite a bit and unfortunately i didn't really come up with any amazing research for you but i was looking at the lows greater than the five percent line okay and by the way you can look at the parameters right here so this is 95 percent of the 50 week closing high this is the weekly chart and then 95 and then 90 percent this is the normal tfm 10 percent system right here is at 90 percent so again in 2000 the market was in pretty good shape and, and if you back this chart way out you can see we had this rip roaring trend coming in to this bear market top right and then we went into the caution zone for a while and then of course we all know what happens that's where bad things happen now the 2009 top you could see that we had a lot of good behavior in here and this is uh this this run here was one of the runs that had me pretty excited about uh, looking into what jeff was saying because it looks like you could come in here and say okay let's have some landry light so to speak above that five percent line in other words lows greater than the line and after a couple of bars or maybe even as many as 10 bars maybe you have a bonafide trend in the works now it's not always this easy but you can see that the market did really well for a while it had a few dips into that five percent line okay or five percent zone but for the most part it did fairly well and then as it began to spend more and more time in that five percent zone five percent plus zone then it began to deteriorate a little bit now if you put in weekly bow ties and and all the other metrics we talked about last week that's going to help you in this analysis and this week we're just going to focus on this one little piece of analysis but obviously there's the bow ties there's the landry light with the 30 simple i'm sorry with, with the with the moving averages especially the 30 exponential moving averages which is one of my favorite moving averages so again once you get into the red zone meaning that you're 10 percent or more away from the 50-week closing high that's where bad things tend to happen okay no guarantee bad things will happen but sometimes it's better to fight and run away in other words be long a market and then get out once you get that 10% parameter. And especially if you have like the TFM 10% system telling you to get out because you're also closing below that 50 week moving average. Sometimes it's better to fight and run away and live to fight another day. So if we go back to the crash of 87, you could see the market did really, really well. And it went into that caution zone a little bit okay and then finally it went back into it tried to get out came right back in and then once you closed into the well into the 10 percent zone that's when things came unglued obviously on the following monday this was a friday i believe this is going to be the monday 
Now, no guarantee, like I said every week, like I say every week, there's no guarantees, but the TFM 10% system did, did trigger a signal on this day. I, I left the moving averages out. I had the moving averages in for, or the moving average in for a while, but I wanted to focus more on this zone chart. So we'll take a look at some of those things in one second. Now, the 70s were an abysmal time, and Bruce Frazier, I was talking to him a while back. That was a chart kind of belief. And he said, as, as horrible as the 70s were, he said there were some pretty good trends mixed in between. And we had a pretty good trend coming into this sell-off in here. But notice that as long as we're above that 5% level, things generally are pretty good. And then we went into a caution mode. Now, here's another case where, to make an example of markets topping, the top was here, right? And it took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It took about a year before it actually finished topping out. But it's been a long time in that caution zone. And let's just go back to 87 real quick. So the top was right there. So you got... If you don't count that week, you got one week, two week, three week, four week, five week, six weeks. So you got at least six or seven weeks, maybe even a little bit more before that market actually tanked. But once you get stuck in the zone, and, and maybe that's something that you guys, uh, Jeff, you seem to be on this research. Maybe that's something we need to look into is once you get in the zone for a while, maybe things are due to deteriorate. So we got in the zone. And we're, we tried to peep out. The low was still here. We peeped out a couple of weeks. And then you can see we did eventually come back in. So, again, it's good as long as you're within 5%. Uh, I would say a caution when you're more than 5% away from that 50-week closing high. And then, of course, 10% is where bad things happen. So there was another bull market in the 70s. And... You had a decent trend coming into it and notice that you spend some time in the caution zone so as i preach quite often you don't have unlimited time when things begin to deteriorate deteriorate but you do have time so again you can see once you got into the red zone things began to deteriorate further now of course the mother of all bear markets where the market lost 90 percent plus you could see you went into the caution zone and then you actually ended up quickly into that red zone and then we all know what happened after that okay kind of a darvis box in the in the caution zone hey i like the way you think darvis did a Darvis and how I made $2 million in the stock market, he was a, to those who don't know him, and I do read the book. It's a good book. It's not as get rich quick as you would think. It won't work in today's markets unless we get into a rip roaring bull market, okay, where everything works. But it is a concept that's worth understanding and visiting with, visiting if that makes any sense. <clears throat> and Darvis was a dancer and somebody gave him stock as payment and just by complete chance he ended up owning a stock and then he started watching the stock and watching the behavior and noticing how the prices went up and down and that kind of hooked him into trading and what Darvis would do is when a stock moved from one box let's say the box is uh I'm just going to pull it out the air, let's say 20 to 25. When it moved out of that box, it went into the 25 to 30 box with a few little caveats. He would look to buy that stock and then stay with it as long as it continued to make boxes on top of boxes. It's a little, it's a little akin to a point and figure chart. Okay, so where are we now? So at the last minute, I got to thinking, let's put in a, a line at 100%. Now, it's hard to see because it's right behind these labels. But this closed right there 
is an all-time high, okay, back in 2021, end of 2021. And so this creates a green zone and kind of a caution zone and then obviously a 10% zone. Now, the way the colors overlay, I tried making it like a nice green, yellow, and then um, red, like a red light, like a traffic light, sort of like the the Landry light, uh, no, the bow tie proper order indicator or illustrator works. But what happens is the way they overlay, it, it changes the color. So evidently, uh, I guess green and yellow make orange. So it just didn't work out. But anyway, this looks kind of cool, I think. And I know you want to party with me. But as long as you're in the green zone, meaning that, again, not to beat that at horse, but you're within 5% of the 50-week closing high, that's obviously a good thing. So we're just on the cusp right now, and we could easily slip back into that caution zone based on what happens tomorrow. And tomorrow would be Friday the 25th. So we're getting close again to the caution zone, and then we do have a ways to go before we get to the where bad things happen zone. Now I'm I'm trying, and try might be the key word in that sentence, but I'm trying to follow the TFM 10% system into queues to see how long I can hang on. But that 50 week moving average is a ways down there and, and that needs to start catching up the price because I, I don't want to give up a lot of those open profits. So we'll see how that shakes out. But I had uh, 50, 60 points of open profits for a while there. And now that's beginning to deteriorate a little bit. Okay. All right, let's uh, just wrap this up. So Jeff said, I've been looking at using two closes below the 5% line plus below the, the 50 simple moving average, kind of a mix of the 230 and the TFM systems. We have come close, but not hit all of those metrics yet. Yeah, again, again, yeah, just rereading that post. I, I do like the way you think about that. So that's kind of a cool thing. And it's kind of fun to do these little, I know you want to party with me, but it's kind of fun to do these little simple things where you combine a little Landry light, maybe moving average and some of the performance-based metric such as the five and 10% line. Looks like pr price is bumping into resistance on rally attempts. Yeah, we'll get to that in a live chart, but we'll take, um, We'll take a look at that bumping into the resistance. I'm not really seeing it unless you're looking at this resistance way back here. But we'll take a look at that, uh, George, when we get to the live charts. Broke out of the top, came back in, then broke out through the bottom. It did not stop for a while. Broke out of the top, came back in, then broke through the bottom. It did not stop for a while. Okay, you lost me on that, Jeff. Can you? Um, I might have deleted one of your posts on your example you're talking about this example here broke out broke out of the top came back in then broke out through the bottom you talk about way back in 2022 87 oh okay yeah so you have to that kind of goes back to the the markets doing what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people or trick the most amount of people. So what he's saying is we dipped into this caution zone and then we went right back up, making everybody think everything's fine, and then we came back into the caution zone. So yeah, I I hear you. It was a, it was the mother of all fake outs. Last time it tried that, it kept on going. Right, it looked pretty good. But this time here, which makes a lot of sense, as you're pointing it out, it didn't work. So it should have kept kept on keeping on. So this could have been a clue right here when it stalled out in that pullback, okay? So you can see it tried to rally, then gave up all of its rally. Back here, it never really, it did okay. It did some stalling action, but then it eventually followed through and it didn't take out the recent lows. Whereas here, obviously, it comes back in hard, so that's a that that should be a big question mark. And then, yeah, right, it made a lower high. So this is a this is an all-time high, and here's a lower high, surrounded by two lower lows. Okay, so that's a little bit 
of concern. You had that same sort of thing here with this pivot point, but it didn't take out these lows and then it, it kept on keeping on, okay? Okay, so, so again, we're kind of on the cusp of some dangerous levels. And there's a lot of other things I want to flesh out. Kind of anxious to get to the live charts. Had some more thoughts on the trader's journey. And one thing that I did a presentation on not that long ago was on May 3rd, the market was chopping around. Somebody was due with it to renew the service. So I, I emailed him and said, hey, you want to continue? And he's like, well, there's not much action lately. So I'm going to go look for a new guy. And at that point, I said, the next guy is going to look like a genius. And that turned out to be the absolute bottom in equity and then we really took off since then so three months later i'm like okay well you stuck it out so what do you think and then he came back with well i don't see anything setting up for a while now the problem is with trend following is you must be present to win you have to live through those choppy times and you have to continue to do your work now must must be present to win doesn't mean you're trading during those times necessarily, but it does mean that you're doing your work every day and you're looking for opportunities. So a lot of times in, in choppy conditions, I end up working harder than I do when things are really going well. So once again, this guy might have the potential to be perpetually out of phase because he was waiting for things to improve, things finally improve, and now they're deteriorating again, so now he's waiting for them to improve. And by the way, I hope the market doesn't go down, but I actually recommended a short tonight, and all except for one long, everything in my Landry list, which is a list I actually trade myself, and I publish every night in my trading service, but there was only one long and everything else was shorts. So I find that kind of interesting. Now, if you give up when the market's choppy, you're never going to get to a nice trending market. And again, if you give up when the market gets a little questionable again, you're never going to get catch that trend again. It does take about six to eight months and sometimes a little bit longer to capture a good momentum cycle. So. I see kind of a revolving door. People will try the service for like a few weeks and they'll give up. And if they try when things are going fantastic, they just think I'm God. And as soon as things get choppy, they think I've lost my touch. But anyway, last week we talked about this potential hamster wheel you can get on. And I literally have one guy that has been emailing me for 30 years and he's still searching systems. Now, I'm a big fan of doing research, and like I said earlier, I did a couple of hours of research this morning, maybe longer, and maybe that's avoidance behavior from other work that I have to do, but that's beside the point. So keep doing research, but make sure you find something simple and stick to it. And then in your research, maybe do things that are kind of simplified, kind of like what Jeff's doing by noodling with this performance-based metric of the 5% line, okay, or the 10% line and so on and so forth. And one thing that happens is, let's say you start with a blank chart and you follow this trend following moron stuff, pullbacks such as landry like pullbacks and you're taking partial profits and you're trailing that stop higher and you let it widen out to, to ride out those longer term trends and things begin to work pretty good. What's going to eventually happen is an inevitable drawdown. It happens, or I don't care if I demonetize, shit happens, right? We all know that. We're all traders here. So you get that drawdown, and then that just throws you right back into that cycle. And again, you end up on the hamster wheel. Now, again, like I said, somebody's been emailing for 30 years. I have other people that are at least 20 something years in the process. And you're like, well, Dave, you sound like a really crappy teacher. Well, I also beat the dead horse a lot, and I showed a wife, the, a wife, 
one's enough. Uh, I showed my wife a column a while back. I'm like, what do you think? She goes, well, you say a lot of the same shit. And I was a little taken back. And the the next day, I got another one of these emails from somebody who's system surfing and has been for the last 20 years or more. And I said, you know what? I'm going to keep saying the same shit until you people get it, right? So that's why I beat the dead horse so much. But keep it keep it simple. And believe me, I went through this journey, okay? And I've been through this rabbit hole more times than I care to admit. And I've spent longer in this journey than I care to admit too. But the bottom line is find something simple and stick with it. And that's why I beat the dead horse so much on a lot of these concepts because I see it every day. I see, and then it's kind of cool having the Facebook group. You know, somebody new comes in, and they do they do okay for a while, but then they immediately begin to reinvent the wheel if they have a little bit of success or if things don't work out right, then they go on the grail hunt and so on and so forth. But you got to be careful not to end up with a lifetime on the hamster wheel. George says price is as simple as it gets. Amen. Amen. I do all my analysis at night. My initial scans, at least, go through a couple thousand charts with no indicators whatsoever. I just look at a blank chart. And the ones I like, I copy over to a list. And if it's something that's topping out, like the stock I recommended earlier as a short tonight, earlier tonight, then I'll check to see if it's also a bow tie or something. But I can just eyeball it and know if it's going to be a bow tie or whatever. Now, one of the worst things that could happen, I kind of alluded to this a minute ago, is that somebody goes with the simple trend following and they have instant success, okay? And they think, oh, I got this, okay? And then they not only got this, they all of a sudden think think that they're God and they begin front running the setups, they begin taking mediocre setups, they micromanage and a host of other bad behaviors. And I've seen people, all kidding aside, quit profitable businesses because they think they got this trading thing figured out. And I'm like, please don't do that. You know, It's not always this good. You can trade and still have a life or a career outside of trading, believe me. In fact, it's better if you do. And here's another beat the dead horse story. One of my clients, a doctor, he calls me up one day and he goes, my trading has gotten a lot better. I'm like, well, what did you do? You finally figured out you're chasing Holy Grail or you, what's going on? He goes, well, my, my doctor that was taking care of the hospital, she quit. So now I'm literally working day and night. I don't have time to trade unless I see the mother of all opportunities. And that's that kind of reiterates my point that busy traders make good traders. But anyway, this is just another way to get on the hamster wheel. And the point I want to make with this instant success is sometimes instant success is the absolute worst thing that can happen to you in trading. In other businesses, maybe not so much. But in trading, the market will give you this false sense of security, okay? I want a few guys out there that'll tell you trading is not easy. Trading is hard, okay? I think a lot about trading. I wake up and write about trading a couple hours every day. I look at charts for hours every day. I watch the screen way too much. I probably make too many trades. It's it's not easy, but it's also not as hard as many people try to make it. And the bottom line is you have to live through a few of those cycles and be really cognizant of the fact that you could very easily end up on the hamster wheel. And I remember a few years back, I thought I discovered something, but it was flawed in that it, it's kind of a long story, but it's it's kind of like my observation had a survival database kind of thing to it. So in other words, I'm seeing stocks up 10% and all you have to do is buy the stocks up 10%. But what the database wasn't showing was how many stocks went up 10% and then absolutely imploded. So at the end of the day, I'm seeing stocks up 100% or whatever the number was, something crazy, 30%, 40% or whatever. And I'm like, well, geez, let's just kind of focus on those. But I quickly found out the map was not the territory. So the point I'm trying to make here is even if you've been at this a while, you've got to be really careful not to go down that rabbit rabbit hole. And if you do find yourself in that rabbit hole, 
and you do think you found something, make sure you play devil's advocate. And believe me, if it's if it's got a problem like a like the survival database issue I talked about, you're gonna find out really quick. You'll f f around and find out, right? Now the not so instant journey is probably the best journey for the trader. You start with this trend following thing, and you and you watch me day after day say, don't do anything, don't do anything. Let's just sit sit tight, or we might do something, lose a little bit go back to sitting on our hands and take a stab here and there. And then you're probably wondering as you go through this, you know, I don't know about this. You'll have some doubts about trading. You have some doubts about me. You have some doubts about simplified trend following. And you'll wonder, geez, does anybody ever make any money at this? And then all of a sudden you start making money. So you're like, okay, it appears to be working now, but I better stay disciplined. I better keep that discipline because I know that it doesn't always work. And that's the biggest secret of trading is living through a few cycles, but trading one methodology through those cycles. And it doesn't have to be something fancy. Again, something really simple like Landry Light pullbacks with, with the proper money management, of course. And you're not gonna do well all of the time, but you will do well over time. That I can almost guarantee. And if you're not doing well, I could probably figure out what you're doing wrong now when the market goes back to being choppy you're like okay this stuff sometimes doesn't work i already know that looks like we're back into that it's not working phase i better get selective right now is that time fyi <laughs> so, one of my wife one of my mother-in-law's friends when she got the internet she got all excited and she would send me all this stuff that was um you know what do you call those things uh urban legends you know and and so i said fyi you can actually confirm these things before you send them out you know old people <laughs> they send out like a thousand like an email with a thousand people's names in it it's like geez and anyway she was pissed she was like fyi what does that mean well i offended her that was the last email i got from her thank god but anyway if i digress so when you get back to Trending again, you're like, oh, it appears to be working again. So I better stay disciplined because I know this doesn't always work. Anyway, I just want to kind of touch back, circle back on that um, trader's journey. Okay, price is as simple as it gets. Absolutely. Okay. And if you're not making money with one indicator, you're not going to make money with 20. Okay. If you're not making money with one setup, you're not going to make money with 10. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and shift gears, keep the questions flowing. Uh, and if you guys want to, if you want me to look at some stocks for you, go ahead and um, start punching those in now. Let's shift gears. Let's take a quick look at crypto and then we'll pop out and look at the overall market, stock market that is. So Bitcoin's a bit of a bummer. We had a little excitement yesterday. It looked like it was bouncing off its lows, but now it's back in the soup, so to speak, just kind of chopping around in here. And we're well below that 30 EMA. So for now, it's not looking too good for Bitcoin. Let's take a look at Ethereum. So Ethereum is not looking so hot either, as you can see. Take a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. BTC, ETH. Or is it ETH BTC? ETH BTC. So Ethereum is actually doing a little bit better than it was compared to Bitcoin. It really had been underperforming for a while, but now it's beginning to rally a little bit. Okay, let's just see if there's anything moving in crypto real quick. And I really haven't been doing my homework in crypto as much as I normally do lately, just because the market's not doing so well. And that's that's kind of a shame on me. I need to crypto is not my bread and butter, at least not now for sure. <laughs> so I do need to pay more attention to it because, like the like stocks, you must be present to win, and you don't want to quit just because the market conditions aren't fantastic. But you might want to stop trading until they improve. However, you have to continue to do your analysis. But anyway, I'm not seeing anything worthwhile. Usually a quick glance like this is all it takes, at least in this present conditions. 
All right, let's shift gears and go to the overall market. And lots and lots and lots to talk about tonight. So first of all, let's take a look at the piece, okay? So we have a bow tie to the downside, and I guess technically that triggered today on a daily chart. So that's no bueno, right? Let's take a look at the weekly chart real quick. Weekly chart still looks pretty good, just like the weekly buy zone or whatever you want to call it. What do we call it? The 5% zone and the 10% zone. We're still in that 5% zone, so so far we're okay. On a weekly basis, we still look okay, but on a daily basis, not so much. And like I talked about in the stock chart show, I don't know if Jim's here tonight, but Jim in the Facebook group does a lot of work with the hourly charts as part of his market timing. And now you're going to get whipsawed quite a bit if you're using an hourly chart, but here's the thing to remember, every market top will start on an hourly chart. So Jim reminds me that it pays to pay attention. And we did have this hourly bow tie at the peak of the market right at the end of, or beginning of August, okay? And it's been pretty ugly, as you probably know, ever since. We tried to turn back up and then we that got thwarted today. So that's obviously a bit of a bummer. Let's take a look at bonds. As I've been saying, it looks like bonds want to come down here and tag these old lows. They did, they bounced, but I wouldn't get excited about them just because of that. My big concern is we take out these old lows, it could get ugly. Well, we're down here, take a look at the dollar. Dollar made multi-month highs today. And the dollar and commodities have an inverse relationship. If the dollar is weak, okay, it's going to take more dollars to buy commodities, right? And that's obviously one of the fears is that we get off the dollar-based the uh, crude oil, the petrodollar which I think has begun to happen, but I've got enough other stuff to worry about, so I'm not gonna worry about that at this moment. Let's take a look at what happened with NVIDIA today. So NVIDIA had good earnings, but notice the market made this burning dog type of pattern. I borrowed that, that term from Linda Rasky, where you have a, a gap to all-time highs and it comes back in, or a gap to all-time lows, or major lows, it comes back in. And I think that's what the gentleman was referring to that was trading those in her office. At least that's we that's what we call them. I don't like trading these burning dog type of patterns, but it does occur. And maybe if you are looking at something like a NVIDIA and it has this huge gap overnight, but then all of a sudden it's like, now what? then maybe that type of strategy might be might be worthwhile. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Oh, before we do that, Apple, computer. I think as goes Apple, unfortunately, and likely so goes the market. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that. One thing that has me concerned is pay attention to the bow tie moving averages and pay attention to their inflection into the 50 simple, okay? So you can see they came down real sharply and blew right through that 50. That's usually a sign of a of a of a major trend change in the work, usually being a keyword in that sentence. Obviously, no guarantees in this business. But Apple's not looking pretty, so that's not a good thing. And um it's not as bad as it used to be. We talked about it last week. I forget the percentages. I think it's only like 10% now of the Qs or of the NASDAQ itself, but it used to be some ungodly number. Bow tie to the downside so far in the NASDAQ, opening gap reversal today. This scores as a major bummer, down nearly 2%, as you can see. So that's ugly. And now we're obviously back below the 50 simple moving average. So we really need to pay attention in here, guys, to what's happening. Rusty's looking pretty bad. Short term, immediate term, pretty ugly sell off today. Longer term, though, it's just stuck in this stupid sideways range as it has been forever. I know you're getting tired of me talking about that. Energies did break out, but as I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, we just really didn't see a whole lot of follow through in that breakout. 
So on a relative strength basis, energies are the strongest or one of the strongest areas out there, probably next to drugs. But we really haven't gained any speed or momentum since we got out of this range. So that's got me a little concerned there. It hasn't anything wrong. It just hasn't anything right lately. Drugs stalled out. And as I've also said here quite a bit, same kind of action with the semis, but a little bit different in that we really only had this one big breakout bar and nothing has followed through since okay and then today obviously the outside day down and one or two more down days like that and we're all the way back to the soup so that's another area to be concerned about health services recently made these decent highs in here one year plus highs but then they roll back over so that's looking kind of ugly Now, manufacturing, one of the stronger areas in here has now begun to roll over. It's on the cusp of a bow tie. It's a first thrust type of setup to the downside. m and C, I'm bearish on m and C. In fact, we have one recommended as a short for tomorrow. Not a huge fan of shorting, but when the market sets up in a certain way, sometimes you're forced to take them. You're not going to get rich as a general statement. I got to watch that. I don't say that because I don't want to jinx myself. You're not going to get rich on the short side as a general statement. However, it does help you to see both sides of the market. And that's probably the biggest value. And then maybe you might make a little money in adverse conditions when the overall conditions are, are poor. And you see a sector like this beginning to kind of implode after it's been in a long run. Obviously, everybody and their brother is happy right there. Okay. Now, the Johnny Come Latelys who bought close to that top, they're underwater. And as this thing begins to implode, more and more people are underwater and they're thinking of they're starting to think about the investment really, really hard. People are giving up open profits. And then anybody who bought from this level up, okay, anybody who bought above, let's just say round numbers 890, okay, based on this index, is now underwater and rethinking their investment. Now also think back to time, okay? So right now. It's obviously August. We go back in time to, let's say, just somewhere around middle of June or towards the end of June. So anybody middle to end of June who bought this stocks in this area or this index, if you could buy it, but let's just say stocks in this area, is now into water. So they're rethinking their investment. And then, of course, the overall market conditions and everything else is just not happening. It's just not helping. Bow tie to the downside in leisure. It's not the end of the world when these bow ties happen, but you do need to pay attention. It's kind of like Jeff pointed out with the 5% line. You want to pay attention when you're in that zone, but that's not looking too good. Let's take a look at retail. Retail got whacked pretty hard in here. If you take a look at the ETF, it's looking much worse. It was one of the stronger areas just a couple of weeks ago, and now it's beginning to implode. It's now on the cusp of bow tying down. And they got whacked 3% and change today. Now we're below the 50 simple moving average. So that's certainly and obviously not a good thing. Transports, not looking so good. Bow ties to the downside, well below the 50. Transports can be kind of choppy, but worth paying attention to like everything else. And notice that we just had top after top after top after top. This last little run failed to get past that top. So we got multiple tops in the works. This is not a pretty chart. Software, software a little bit stronger than some of the other areas, some of the other technology, but it had a major reversal today. And also, it looks like a bit of a head and shoulders top is forming here. And if this right side, yeah, this right side is slightly higher than the left. And that's how I like them because it kind of fakes, fakes out some of the people that think, oh, we're just going back to old highs. Everything's going to be fine. So, and I don't know if somebody pointed that out to me years ago or just from looking at millions of charts, literally millions of charts over the year, years I've discovered that. But the right side higher than the left helps. And keep in mind, I don't trade directly off the big picture technical analysis, but if you get in bow ties and other signals that are happening, then you sort of use that big picture technical analysis as kind of wind in your sail or kind of like you know wind at your back, so to speak. Semiconductors, my favorite area to watch 
to confirm market action. Unfortunately, it's not looking too good. We have a big picture double top possibly in the works. Shorter term, we have the sideways action. We bow tied to the downside. Today was the day, okay? I came into today thinking, all right, we got NVIDIA earnings. Maybe the video will gap higher, keep on going, and that's going to boost the rest of the semis, and we'll get out of this soup. We'll get well above this 50 simple moving average. But unfortunately, it came right back in. And I've been retired a little bit from my day trading lately, but I, I couldn't help myself. I had to buy some SOX S as I saw it begin to implode. Okay, that's it for the markets. You guys want to take a look at any individual stocks? I'll be happy to do so now. Yeah, ever since we had the Facebook group, we tend to talk about the stocks there. The only thing I'm seeing that there's, like I said, one possible long going in more that I'd be interested in, and I'm not. I'm just I'm just saying it looks okay. If conditions were better, I might take it. It's a shipper, which can be choppy. Shipper, shipping stocks can be a little choppy. Uh, shipping stocks, education stocks, and there's a few other areas. Airlines are, are pretty crappy; they don't really trend that well. There's a few areas that don't trend uh, trend well. Okay, no questions. Okay, no individual stock picks. All right, quite a bunch tonight. If you do have any questions and you're watching a recording of this, just leave it leave it down below. I do read all comments and I do answer uh, anytime that something is necessary, and I'm sure I can have an answer for you or find an answer for you pretty quickly. Anyway, I think that's it. Uh, then thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate, again, you attending. Any, anything on answer, davelander.com slash contact or leave a question below on YouTube. I'll see all you guys and girls tomorrow on Facebook. Everybody else, have a great weekend and may the trend be with you. You're welcome, Sam. Thanks for attending.